The Cross Product, Level 8. In this video, we will go over one final application of the cross product. In the fields of physics and engineering, a body can have both translational and rotational motion. Recall from a previous video that the net force applied to a body causes the body to accelerate at a particular direction. It turns out that a body can still experience motion even if the net force acting on the body is equal to zero. For example, say we have a box whose mass is uniformly distributed and is sitting on a table. If we apply two equal forces and opposite in direction along the center of the box, this will create a net force equal to zero, and the box will not accelerate. It will have no translational motion. On the other hand, if we shift these same forces so that they point away from the center of the box as follows, this will cause the box to move. Specifically, it will cause the box to rotate, even though the forces were equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. The application of these forces caused the box to rotate. This means that a body can have rotational as well as translational motion. If we assume that an object can be treated as a rigid body, a body in which forces that act on them do not cause deformations, such as stretching, twisting, and squeezing, then the tendency for an object to rotate about an axis due to the application of a force is referred to as the torque on the object. You can think of torque as a physical quantity that describes the rotational or turning effort of a force. Just like the net force acting on a body gives rise to a linear acceleration, the net torque on a rigid body gives rise to an angular acceleration. In physics, the cross product can be used to measure torque. This is also known as the moment m of a force f about a point p. Usually, physicists tend to use the word torque, while engineers usually use moment. In either case, it is important to specify about which point the force is acting on. It is not enough to just say, find the torque. Torque is always defined with reference to a specific point, so keep this little detail in mind. In the figure shown, a force F is applied at point Q. So the moment of the force F about point P is given by the following expression, vector PQ crossed with the force F. The magnitude of the moment M measures the tendency of vector PQ to rotate counterclockwise about an axis directed along vector M which is perpendicular to both vector PQ and the force F. We can determine the way it will rotate by using the right-hand rule introduced in the previous videos. The concept of a moment makes more sense if we use a bolt and a wrench. We can tighten a bolt that is located at point P and is perpendicular to the XY plane. By applying a force on the wrench, this will produce a turning effect. In this case, we are producing a moment or a torque relative to point P, or in this case, the origin. If we use vector r to denote the position vector from point P to the point where the force F is being applied, in this case, point Q, then the torque about the origin or point P is represented by the Greek letter tau and can be written alternatively as follows vector r crossed with vector f the vector produced from the cross product of these two vectors measures the tendency of the rigid body to rotate about the origin the direction of the torque vector indicates the axis of rotation so the bolt and the wrench will rotate about this axis. 
The magnitude of the torque vector can be found by using the geometric definition of the cross product. In this case, the magnitude of the torque about the origin will be equal to the magnitude of the position vector r times the magnitude of the force f times sine of the angle between the position and force vector. Notice that if the force is applied closer to the axis of rotation, the rigid body experiences less torque, even though the same force is being applied. If the angle between the position vector and force vector stays the same, we can generate a greater torque by simply applying the force further away from the axis of rotation. Also notice that the only component of the force vector f that can cause a body to rotate is the one perpendicular to the position vector r, or in this case, the magnitude of the force vector f times sine of theta. If the force vector points parallel or anti-parallel to the position vector r, this force will not cause the wrench to rotate, so it will not tighten or loosen the bolt. On the other hand, if the force is applied at an angle, then we break apart the force vector into components that are parallel and perpendicular to the position vector. In any case, it is the orthogonal component of the force that causes the wrench to rotate. The magnitude of the torque vector is essentially equal to the area of the parallelogram with the position vector r and force vector f as adjacent sides. By using the right-hand rule, we can determine if the wrench will be rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. If the wrench is rotating counterclockwise, then the torque vector will be pointing up out of the page or plane. If the wrench is rotating clockwise, then the torque vector will be pointing down or into the page or plane. By convention, we usually assign counterclockwise rotations to be positive torques or have positive sense, and clockwise rotations are considered to be negative torques, those that have negative sense. This is the same conventions that we use when measuring angles in standard positions. We also use a dot to represent a vector that points out of the page or plane, and a cross to represent a vector that points into the page or plane. The SI unit of torque is the Newton meter. Now, this is going to be a little confusing because this was the same unit that we used for measuring work, which was introduced in the dot product video series. In the case of work, the unit was measuring energy in joules. Despite this, it is important to understand that torque is not work or energy. Torques should always be expressed in Newton meters and not joules. This will help avoid mistakes and misunderstandings. In the US customary system, the unit of force is the pound force and the unit of distance is the foot. So the unit of torque is the foot-pound. Sometimes they pronounce this quantity as pound-foot to differentiate it from the units of work. All right, these are the basics of torques. This topic is covered more extensively in a typical physics course. And for this multivariable calculus course, the concepts covered are more than enough to solve typical problems. In our next video, we will do just that and go over various torque examples.